Question 1. Tell us what is your experience with RF technology? Answer. You can describe what you know about it. Specific projects you have done. Or relevant places you worked in. Government. Security. Information technology industries. Etc. Question 2. Did you work in the field of RF engineering? Answer. Begin with specific places you worked, like government agencies or manufacturing companies. You can then briefly add what exactly you did in RF engineering in each of those places. Question 3. How was your experience in RF design and implementation? Answer. Describe any jobs or assignments you were involved in with wireless telecommunication, with an emphasis on design, implementation, and optimization of networks. Describe responsibilities like initial system dimensioning and design, coverage and frequency planning, interference analysis, etc. Question 4. Do you know what ag collision is? Answer. Another problem readers have is reading a lot of chips in the same field. Tag collision occurs when more than one chip reflects back a signal at the same time, confusing the reader. Different vendors have developed different systems for having the tags respond to the reader one at a time. Since they can be read in milliseconds, it appears that all the tags Tags are being read simultaneously. Question 5. Do you know what is energy harvesting? Answer. Most passive refib tags simply reflect back waves from the reader. Energy harvesting is a technique in which energy from the reader is gathered by the tagged, stored momentarily and transmitted back at a different frequency. This method may improve the performance of passive refib tags dramatically. Question 6. Do you know the difference between read-only and read-write tags? Answer. Microchips in refit tags can be read-write or read-only. With read-write chips, you can add information to the tag or write over existing information when the tag is within range of a reader or interrogator. Read-write tags usually have a serial number that can't be written over. Additional blocks of data can be used to store additional information about the items the tag is attached to. Some read-only microchips have information stored on them during the manufacturing process. The information on such chips can never been changed. Changed. Other tags can have a serial number written to it once and then that information can't be overwritten later. Question 7. Do you know what reader collision is? Answer. One problem encountered with refib is the signal from one reader can interfere with the signal from another where coverage overlaps. This is called reader collision. One way to avoid the problem is to use a technique called time division multiple access or TDMA. In simple terms, the readers are instructed to read at different times rather than both trying to read at the same time. This ensures that they don't interfere with each other. But it means any refib tag in an air where two readers overlap will be read twice. So the system has to be set up so that if one reader reads a tag another reader does not read it again. Question 8. Do you know what an electronic product code is? Answer. The electronic product code, or FID, was developed by the Auto ID Center as a successor to the barcode. It is a numbering scheme that will be used to identify products as they move through the global supply chain. For more on EPC technology, Question 9. Do you know how much information can the tag store? Answer. It depends on the vendor and the application. But typically a tag would carry no more than 2 kilobytes of data enough to store some basic information about the item it is on. Companies are now looking at using a simple license plate tag that contains only a 96-bit serial number. The simple tags are cheaper to manufacture and are more useful for applications where the tag will be disposed of with the product packaging. Question 10. Tell me did all countries use the same low, high and ultra high frequencies? Answer. Most countries have assigned the 125 kHz or 134 kHz area of the radio spectrum for low frequency systems, and 13.56 MHz is used around the world for high frequency systems. But UHF refit systems have only been around since the mid 1990s, and countries have not agreed on a single area of the UHF spectrum for refit. Europe uses 868 MHz for UHF, and the US uses 915 MHz. Until recently, Japan did not allow any use of the UHF spectrum for RFID, but it is looking to open up the 960 MHz area for RFID. Many other devices use the UHF spectrum, so it will take years for all governments to agree on a single UHF band for RFID. Governments also regulate the power of the readers to limit interference with other devices. Some groups, 
such as the Global Commerce Initiative, are trying to encourage governments to agree on frequencies and output. Tag unreader makers are also trying to develop systems that can work at more than one frequency to get around the problem. Question 11. Do you know which frequency is right for your application? Answer. Different frequencies have different characteristics that make them more useful for different applications. For instance, low frequency tags are cheaper than ultra high frequency UHF tags, use less power and are better able to penetrate non metallic substances. They are ideal for scanning objects with high water content, such as fruit, at close range. UHF frequencies typically offer better range and can transfer data faster, but they use more power and are less likely to pass through materials and because they tend to be more directed. They require a clear path between the tag and reader. UHF tags might be better for scanning boxes of goods as they pass through a bay door into a warehouse. It is probably best to work with a consultant, integrator or vendor that can help you choose the right frequency for your application. Question 12. Explain is refit better than using barcodes? Answer, Refit is not necessarily better than barcodes. The two are different technologies and have different applications, which sometimes overlap. The big difference between the two is barcodes are line of sight technology. That is, a scanner has to see the barcode to read it, which means people usually have to orient the barcode towards a scanner for it to be read. Radio frequency identification, by contrast, doesn't require line of sight. Refit tags can be read as long as they are within range of a reader. Bar Barcodes have other shortcomings as well. If a label is ripped, soiled or falls off, there is no way to scan the item. And standard barcodes identify only the manufacturer and product, not the unique item. The barcode on one milk carton is the same as every other, making it impossible to identify which one might pass its expiration date first. Question 13. Tell me is Refid new? Answer. Refid is a proven technology that's been around since at least the 1970s. Up to now, it's been too expensive and too limited to be practical for many commercial applications. But if tags can be made cheaply enough, they can solve many of the problems associated with barcodes. Radio waves travel through most non-metallic materials, so they can be embedded in packaging or encased in protective plastic for weatherproofing and greater durability. And Tags have microchips that can store a unique serial number for every product manufactured around the world. Question 14. Do you know what is Refid? Answer. Radio frequency identification or Refid is a generic term for technologies that use radio waves to automatically identify people or objects. There are several methods of identification. But the most common is to store a serial number that identifies a person or object and perhaps other information on a microchip that is attached to an antenna. The chip and the antenna together are called an refit transponder or an refit tag. The antenna enables the chip to transmit the identification information to a reader. The reader converts the radio waves reflected back from the refit tag into digital information that can then be passed on to computers that can make use of it. Question 15. Do you know how an refit system work? Answer. An refit system consists of a tag which is made up of a microchip with an antenna and an interrogator or reader with an antenna. The reader sends out electromagnetic waves. The tag antenna is tuned to receive these waves. A passive refit tag draws power from field created by the reader and uses it to power the microchip circuits. The chip then modulates the waves that the tag sends back to the reader and the reader converts the new waves into digital data. 